Yeah, I have one. How dare you fill my head with such loathsome propaganda! On WCBU. And we're back here on View in the Morning Fridays. And we have a special guest here on View in the Morning Friday. Joey, who do we John got? We got Jonathan Womack, author of the new book, The Dogman Cometh. Jonathan, say hello. How you doing, Joe and Phil? Thanks for having me Welcome back. Welcome to the studio, Welcome. Jonathan. Thanks. Yeah, good to be here. So, so Halloween, huh? Good, <laughs> good, day for, uh, good day for some of this stuff. What's going on? Tell us a little bit about this book. Well, this book is called The Dogman Cometh, and it's the story of uh, a ranger out in Glacier Park, Montana, who learns that he is uh, the last survivor of the bloodline of the dog soldiers, the Cheyenne dog soldiers from 150 years ago. And uh, he is charged with stopping this white serial killer who has come to the mountains to destroy his race, and it's up to him to defeat him. Nice. Be honest. Oh, is my mic? Yeah. <laughs> Be honest, is this an autobiography? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yes, I am the dog man. <laughs> uh, okay, just checking. Well, that sounds exciting. And uh, you had written a book previous to this, A Cry for a Hero. Yes, A Cry for a Hero. I was here uh, two years ago to promote that. That's uh, fiction's first out-of-body superhero. So instead of going into the, uh, the phone booth to change into Superman, uh, this guy from Colorado lies down and goes into a trance and separates from his body and uh, has... Strange and fantastic powers far beyond those of mortal men. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, um, yep. during the break, I heard you giving Jason a little bit of the history behind um, the story in The Dogman Cometh. What's some of the history behind that for, for some of the listeners who might not know? Well, it stems from the Sand Creek Massacre, which was a real event. Uh, 1864, uh, the cavalry signed a peace treaty with the Cheyenne. They said, you can go over here and live in Sand Creek in peace. And then that didn't last too long. This Colonel Shivington, who was basically a white supremacist, serial killer, psycho guy, him and a bunch of his renegades went in one early morning to the Cheyenne encampment and slaughtered uh, several hundred men, women, and children. And a, a, a band of Cheyenne dog soldiers escaped, and they were chased from Sand Creek, Colorado, into Montana, what is today Glacier National Park. Never to be seen again. <laughs> <laughs> so there is some... There is some historical basis in in the story. Now, what what exactly? Where do you take it from from there? Where where do you go with the with the whole story? Well, uh, yeah, it's that fine line between where history leaves off and fiction takes over. Um, the synopsis I gave is is more the historical fact, and then I, I take it from there, where Jared Neeling is a, a park ranger sitting on the cliff by the falls, wondering where next to steer his life course. He's uh, an orphan, so he doesn't know what his roots are. Um, and then after a near-fatal misstep, he, he finds himself inside a cave with a shaman who tells him about Sand Creek and that he is the, the last survivor of that bloodline of uh, Cheyenne dog soldiers. And in fact, the white devil has returned after 150 years to finish what it started, and uh, it all happens tonight under the blood moon. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, uh, let, if you don't mind talking about uh, your your past, you know, how did you get started writing? What kind of um, things were you reading? What are your influences as far, and how did you get into this style of writing? Well, uh, my favorite writer is Dean Koontz. I like the suspense, page-turning reads, mm -hmm. and I had the idea for uh, A Cry for a Hero, my first book, I had an idea for that back in the 80s and didn't think seriously about writing it until 1999 when I felt like it was time to sit down and take on this project. And that book was more about sharing my out-of-body experiences rather than starting a cult. I thought I would write a, a cool <laughs> action adventure sort of Spider-Man, X-Men kind of feel to it. And uh, yeah, he's a superhero with a twist where he goes out of his body. Uh, has all these fantastic powers, and he loved Superman as a kid, so he takes that form uh, when he goes out of body, and then he discovers a terrorist plot to destroy Boston, and he has to rise to the challenge and try to stop these bastards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
To put it gently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so was the uh, was the second book a little easier to write than the first book? Yeah, the first one was uh, pretty lengthy at 123,000 words. Uh, the Dog Man is 59,000 words. So it's um, it's a different feel to the book. It's much more intense, and it happens instead of two days, it happens in one night. And it's that hour to hour, minute to minute, as the moon mm-hmm. is going through this uh, this eclipse, this lunar eclipse. And it's also because uh, the legend says that when the wind sleeps on the mountain and the blue moon bleeds red, the dog man will return. And uh, as I said, it's uh, an eclipse of a blue moon, which is pretty rare. And that's all happening tonight. So the hero doesn't have much time to, to get his act together. He's got a lot of trials. Um, he has an unfortunate accident that blinds him. So he's got to rely on his uh, connection with his spirit brothers and his otherworldly powers. All, his, all of his senses are enhanced. So he can see like a bat sees, and uh, his sense of touch and everything is enhanced. So he and his horse Stonewalker, uh, they they um, they have to save the anthropologist Jessica Corbett. She's the love interest, and she's out there with her team of diggers looking for the lost tribe. And all of her team is murdered by this uh, this white devil. And together, her and Dogman have to survive a night of. Uh, Predators and you know human and animal predators and and terrors and yeah it's pretty intense. Yeah, these sounds like both books sound relatively sensational. A lot of imagery. Is that the kind of the writing style you would describe yourself as? Yeah, I get that a lot from people that I'm very descriptive and they feel like they're there in the scene, which is good. Um, both heroes are similar in the way that their way of life is being threatened. With a cry for hero, the terrorists are coming here to to destroy democracy and uh, cripple our country. In the dog man, the white devil has come to destroy his race. So they're both faced. They're average guys who are thrust into extraordinary circumstances and really have to dig deep within to fight for their, their way of life. Now, when you write, obviously, these sound pretty intense. When you write an intense book like this, do you get, do you get really wrapped up in it? Like, uh, how do you kind of separate and go back to just... You know, walking around and living and eating lunch <laughs> after, you, <laughs> after you write about the some some of these intense. When you finish an intense chapter, you just oh, I think I'll have some chicken for dinner tonight. <laughs> how, how does that how does that work out? Well, it works out pretty good because actually that's um, I'll get some of my best ideas when I'm I'm at Wendy's looking up the menu, wondering <laughs> what I'm gonna have, <laughs> and I'll see something and it will trigger uh, an idea. And I'll, I was just, oh my gosh, that's perfect. Yeah, I'm going to use that. So just uh, being the, the daily average routine life, I, I work at Harvard during the day and I write at night. Um, all that goes into my writing. It's the most uh, you know innocuous thing you might look at, and it'll trigger the coolest idea. I wish my brain got better when I went to Wendy's. <laughs> I, I go there quite often. I'd be just... a genius if that were the case. <laughs> I know, yeah. Um, now, you said that the last book was about twice as long, um, but in any case, how long, did it, how long does it take to write a book like this? How long did it take you to get this done, especially if you're working during the day and doing this only at night? How, how long does it take you to get this done? Yeah, the first one took me two years in my spare time, which isn't a lot. Um, and the, fir- the second book didn't take me as long. It's much shorter, of course. And the book I'm working on now, Old Souls, is going to take me even less. So as I go, it gets the process becomes a little more streamlined. Well, that's good. Chopping, <laughs> chopping days off, <laughs> chopping visits to Wendy's off as well. I presume. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to uh, your first book, Cry for a Hero. Did I hear you say that you had some of your own out of body experiences? Yes. Oh, incredible. Yeah, when I was a kid. Uh, when it, the, the first experience I had, I was lying in bed at night and I heard this thumping sound and I thought it was big. I was eight years old and I thought this thumping sound was Bigfoot coming out of the woods heading mm-hmm. for my house to, uh, to get little boys who stay up late at night and are supposed to be asleep. <laughs> yeah, I, I was in deep doo-doo and I, I heard him, you know, he's coming up the driveway, he's coming in the house and he's coming down the hallway and coming in the bedroom and it was this thump thump and it was actually my 